All right, we are on filmsgonewild.com. My name is John Wildman, and we are going to talk about the film Valentina. We have, uh, and, I, and I hope I say this correct, and please correct me if I don't, Cassio Pera dos Santos? Yes, that's it. All right, from the film <laughs> Valentina. Uh, this, I, I loved this film, um, but uh, Cassio, uh, you tell, um, our audience has not seen the film as yet, Mm -hmm. So you introduce them to the film. Tell us about Valentina. Yes, uh, Valentina is my first feature film. It was shot uh, two years ago here in Brazil. And uh, Valentina tells the story of this uh, transgender girl. She's 17 and she moves to a new town to start fresh with her mom. So in her previous schools, he, she had uh, been harassed. Uh, her experiences at school were really awful because that's the reality of uh, transgender students here in Brazil. And she decides to go to this other school in another town. With, uh, she moves with her mom and she tries to enroll with, in this new school with her social name, with her new name, because she wants to be more private uh, about her life and uh, she wants to, to enroll, enroll with her social name. But the principal tells that it's necessary to get uh, her father's signature in order to uh, so that she can enroll with her social name, but uh, her father is missing. So Valentina and her mom, they have to start looking for uh, her father and she makes uh, friends. And I mean, there's this social uh, aspect of the film. It's a uh, socially relevant film, but there's also some parts uh, with uh, her friends, uh, young characters. Uh, in the beginning, they also have fun. Uh, I mean, it's, uh, it's supposed to be entertaining, but it also socially relevant. Well, you know, one of the things I, I really appreciated about the film is that um, it takes our subject, um, which are, which, you know, you know, one of the, you know, the main aspects of this is the struggle um, to just exist as a transgender teen. And regardless of being in Brazil or the US or anywhere, Mm -hmm. um, because of prejudices, because of ignorance, because of fear, and all, you know, all of that, all of that crap, right? Yeah. And I think one of the things that, that I really appreciated is that the film, it has a dramatic structure um, with, you know, with, with, with you know, the, uh, uh, the kind of tragic implications and aspects that, 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 that we would expect, but you also weave in what I call the low grade um, uh, you know, the, 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 the tiny paper cuts, right? Uh, you know, that, 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 that someone like that, you know, ha goes through, that someone like myself would never, never ever go through, right? And, you know, mm -hmm. and, and one of those elements is the idea of, um, you know, please do not dead name me. Please, you know, use my, you know, you, you use my name and don't, uh, you know, even though your red tape and your official uh, capacity says, well, we have to, you, we, have, we have to refer to you uh, you know, as your former name, and you go, you don't have to. You yeah. Know, you, have to, you know, and, and. It's a dead and, name, yeah. Yeah, exactly. And, and where we, you know, and, and where you would go, that is a huge deal. That is a huge major deal that, that, that again, unless you're in that position, you can never understand the heartbreak every time you hear that other name, right? Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and, and, and I really appreciated how, how in a low key way, you weave that in, and yet we see, you know, it, it resonates when we when we we see it resonate on her. We we see it uh, play across her face and her mom's face, and you know, in in those moments. Talk to me now that I've just bragged about your movie a bunch. Um, talk to me about how, I and mean, this is your first feature, how you worked to keep the nuance correct. That you didn't go overboard on you know, mm -hmm. on, on the drama on on what uh -huh. you do, those things. Yes, uh, for us it was important to find a balance uh, between the drama and also some uh, some moments that were more everyday life, uh, not so forceful. Uh, I mean, it was a challenge to find this balance, but I think uh, it always started during the research because. Uh, since the research, we had some uh, trans uh, persons uh, helping us during the research. We had Pedro Diniz. He was uh, one of our researchers. He was a, a trans, he is a trans boy. Uh, we also had Sofia, who was a trans girl helping us during the research. And also Pedro interviewed around uh, 50 uh, trans uh, women here in Brazil 
in order so that we could have uh, the, the raw material to, to start writing the script. So uh, the, the reality for most of transgenders here in Brazil are really tough. Uh, most of them are marginalized. marginalized. And uh, uh, through these interviews, we listened, listened to really tough stories that were really uh, difficult to, to hear. And uh, I mean, they were really uh, difficult stories. Uh, we know that it was important to, to get the drama, to get uh, the, the reality of the, the trans kids and the trans women in Brazil into the film. But at the same time, we wanted to make a film for the youth. So we wanted the, that the, this film could be watched by a maybe 14 year old plus, something like this. Uh, we wanted to make a film for teenagers as well in the film that maybe a film that maybe the families could watch with uh, the kids. Right. Uh, with teenagers, so it, it was important for us that uh, uh, it was important the drama, but we didn't get we didn't want to get uh, very uh, strong or depressing in the sense that uh, we didn't want to uh, portray only the tragedy, but we also wanted to make something that were uh, hopeful because as we wanted the kids to watch the film, we still want the kids to watch the film, the teenagers. I think it's important. It was important that we try to make the film, try to make a film uh, that were hopeful and also with a, a, a maybe a, a positive uh, uh, approach. It's not maybe it's not a, a happy ending like a classical happy ending, but it's it's quite life affirming and it's a, a positive. There's a positive part as well. So it was we we did try to balance the the drama, the the difficult parts. Uh, with even some moment with some moments that were fun, she she hangs out uh, with her friends, and there's also some uh, fun moments that were important for the film too. Oh, I'm not listening to you. Uh, oh, there we go. No, I, I okay. I, I, I sorry about that. That's a no that's problem. First, um, I, I I have my dogs protecting me, and. Uh, uh -huh. <laughs> Um, I, I have my dogs with me too. Sometimes they, <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, again, the relationship with the mom, I think is, 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 is a, another great example of, of the nuance and care that you take to not, to, you know, to, to have a wonderful supportive relationship. Um, but not, you know, not, not in, in a situation comedy kind of way, not in a lifetime channel kind of way to use, you know, us, you know, television references. Um, you know, but again, you know, approaching this as a director, um, who, you know, you know, when when you're dealing with uh, a, a, a highly charged and a highly sensitive uh, topic like transgender youth, you go, ah, you know, even if technically I'm great, even if I've done, you know, the the research or what have you, I still need to be on point with the sensitivity to get this right. And so mm -hmm. I would love for you to talk on a personal nature as far as, you know, your concerns and then what you did to say, this is what I'm going to try to do to make sure I don't take a misstep. In the sense to, uh, to try the- And, and to the represent the, 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 the situation that a transgender youth- Uh-huh. Yeah, uh, I think, uh, as I said, the research was really important, right. but I think maybe as important as the, the research is that we found uh, this uh, wonderful actress. She's a trans actress, uh, Chiesa Weinbeck. Uh, she's a YouTube star in Brazil. She has several followers, but that was the first time she was uh, acting for uh, the camera, camera for film. And uh, when Chiesa came on board, she also brought her sensibility uh, with her. So uh, we read the scenes together. She uh, suggested some little changes and uh, adjustments. And it was, uh, I mean, it was not only the writer and the director tally, telling the actors what to do, but there was a collaboration. The Chiesa, uh, the protagonist, uh, she was also uh, giving me a lot of inputs and uh, creating the character as well. So I think if Valentina looks like a real person, not uh, not me. Of course, it's it's fiction as well, but mm -hmm. it's because of Chiesa's sensibility. I think it was right. really important to have her inputs and her collaboration. 
Right. All right, now let's talk about once you get into the editing bay. You know, you shot all this footage. Um, you know, you have a wonderful cast uh, uh, um, that, that, have, that have really uh, done well by you. Um, but when you get in there, you know, there are those moments where you put an assembly cut together and you go, this is not the movie I intended. What, what, what happened here? What did I miss? I would love for you to talk about that, you know, you know, going through that process as a director, you know, from that assembly cut to, to, to what we see now, you know, you know, to, you know, to yeah. put that in. Uh-huh. Uh, it, it was funny because uh, in, my, in my short films, I use, after the shooting, I used to, to sit uh, by myself and watch all the material. And uh, sometimes I, I edited the, the short films myself and sometimes I had editors working with me. But with this film, I didn't watch uh, a lot of the footage by myself uh, alone. I was uh, waiting for the, the editor to, to come on board and so that we could watch together. And uh, as uh, we, we had, I had already worked with this uh, editor uh, with a short, a previous short film, and I really trusted him. And uh, he, uh, we, we, and we were working at different cities. I live in Minas Gerais, and he was uh, doing the editing in São Paulo. Mm. So uh, he first watched the material, and then we had a Skype call. And he gave uh, his inputs, his impressions about the, the story. And then he started to, to edit, like uh, he calls, like uh, the first version he calls a monster, in the sense that it's not even a, a rough cut yet. It's just like the, the structure of the film. Every film he calls, oh, now we're going to edit, edit this monster, which is like a, a first look at the, the whole material. And after I watched the, this version, uh, I mean, the, the movie didn't have re rhythm yet. And uh, maybe during this, this, this first uh, version, I, I was a little bit afraid that maybe I, I, did, I couldn't get where I wanted to get with the material. But then it was, uh, I mean, uh, he started editing new versions, then I, tra I traveled to Sao Paulo to, to, wa to watch the, the material with him and to discuss the material with him. But he's, has, he has great sensibility and he's really smart. He, uh, his name is Alexandre, Alexandre Taira. And he, for him, it was really, uh, the most important thing for him is, was to try to find the emotion of each scene. The emotion was the, the, the most important. Then he had the rhythm and then he had uh, information. And he's a really methodic guy and I trusted him a lot. So uh, it was really trusting in, in the editor. Uh, and I mean, we had worked before, so I knew he, he had the sensibility it was needed. Right. Well, uh, you, you put your trust on the right guy because it is, yeah. it, it, it is really well done. Um, again, the film is Valentino, Valentina. Uh, we've been talking with Castillo Pera dos Santos. It is screening at the San Luis Obispo International Film Festival. Uh, Castillo, it's been, I, I love this film and it's been wonderful talking to you about it.